Shalom. Kohen Lamla Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakankadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, a sure word of Bible prophecy. So this is a video that I came across and this video here is by Redacted and I recommend you subscribe to this channel. Quite often they make a lot of great videos that lines up with Bible prophecy and once again it's called Redacted. That's R-E-D-A-C-T-E-D. -E -E so anyway they're they're talking about, excuse me, <clears throat> they're talking about one of the major last day's prophecies concerning the MOTB. And this comes right at the tail of the World Economic Forum talking about conspiracy theorists must be stopped or banned. So on one hand, they're saying conspiracy theorists must be stopped or shut up. But on the other hand, they're moving forward with the exact plans that we're warning about. So how can you say we're conspiracy theorists? It makes no sense. So they're actually moving forward with this sinister plan. Now, the game plan is they want to be able to deposit what they call universal basic income into every citizen's account directly from these banks via the Fed Now program that has already launched this month, if I'm not mistaken, it's launched this month. The Fed Now program will allow these federal banks to have direct connectivity with the customers, with the people. So instead of waiting a week two weeks, three weeks to get a direct deposit. It all happens within a 24 hour span. So it's convenient and it's timely and it's very useful. But at the same time, it establishes total control by the powers that be. So we've been talking about this thing for a long time and now it's no longer a future event, but it's actually occurring now, but it just has not been fully mandated yet, but that's coming. So I'm not going to play the video because YouTube is very sensitive, but I will copy and paste the video in the description box. Oh, here's the, so here's what's happening. So let's say, for example, based on what your net worth is or what assets you have, all of those assets will be tokenized or given a certain credit or merit. If you were in the Boy Scouts, you had you were on a merit based system. So this social construct or the social credit system is going to be based on points or merits or credits. So based on your net worth, your number of cars, your houses, your land, it's all going to be assigned a certain weight or metric under this, met, under this merit based system. So everything is going to be weighed or measured under a merit based system. Land, businesses, cars, properties, houses, and you will be assigned a number which is going to be merged into a barcode under the MOTB, a digital payment and purchase system and buy-in system. So that's the essence of the video. 
<clears throat> can't make this long tonight. My, vo my voice is very dry. So I want to go here. Let's go to Second Peter chapter 1. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 1. Where does the spirit want me to go? All right, we need to go up to verse 17. Second Peter chapter 1. Let's go to verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And this scripture here, when we read it, we must understand that the men that are reading these prophecies, the apostles, are actually back in their lot. That's how bad and, and amazing Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is. <coughs> so the same men that documented these words are actually teaching right now. That's how heavy it is when we're reading these scriptures. So this is why the apostles and many of the elders and prophets that are teaching faith is very heavy because these men are feeling heavy, demanding lots. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord, Yehoshai, Mashiach, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we are following eyewitnesses. Whenever we try to examine a matter or circumstances or a case, we do what? Let's speak to the eyewitnesses. Were there any witnesses? So we're listening to the apostles that are the men that have firsthand knowledge or were eyewitnesses of the accounts, the lifestyle, and the journeys and teachings of Yahweh who, by the way, is also a direct witness unto the Heavenly Father. So he is our mediator to the Heavenly Father. So we can see that we have a direct channel by which we are communicating through. That order, the Most High, Yahweh Shai, the Apostles, the prophets and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount and quite often we can read these scriptures but not understand the gravity behind what we're reading so we are literally learning from the men that heard the voice of the most high and walk and learn under Yahweh Shai. So who doesn't want to talk to the eyewitnesses that were at the scene of these events, these circumstances? So the prophecy that we are relying upon has been tried, tested, and proven over the test of time. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. <laughs> Let's look up this word sure. One moment. We have a more sure word of Bible prophecy. 
more sure comes from the Greek. Strong's G 949. Bebaios. Bebaios. Trusty or trustworthy, steadfast, firm, of force, stable. So understanding Bible prophecy is the pillar of wisdom, which is a sure foundation or a firm ground that we can rely upon. So this becomes stability in our walk because we're not panicking knowing that prophetic events are transpiring. So it keeps us stable through our faith and understanding that these events must come to pass and are right on schedule of the Most High's timeline. 2 Peter 1 and 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein too ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Yahweh Shai is the day star. <laughs> that is opening up our third eye to gain understanding of these scriptures. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And this is where I wanted to go. <clears throat> so we've been mocked and scoffed for interpreting these events to come. That this beast system is going to push a miniaturized digital purchasing and buying device that is trackable, scannable, and that links us in to the grid, the B system. So we were told that we were insane, that we were conspiracy theorists, that we were madmen out of our mind. So where are those individuals apologizing for being stupid? Where are they? Produce your cause Bring forth your strong reason, saith the God of Jacob. So a man would fess up and say, hey, look, I'm sorry for being stupid. But we know most of our men here in America have been really just warded down, compromised, and, and just turned out. They're not really men, okay? They're really not. They're genetically modified organisms walking around with penises. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Now, why is this important? We are listening. We are listening to men with first hand accounts that would make any detective or private investigators day. He would have a field day. You mean to tell me I can talk to the eyewitnesses? Somebody is not following me here. So the men that wrote these prophecies, these words, are re-emphasizing and teaching these words in the last days. So there's no better witness than an eyewitness with first-hand account of hearing the voice learning under Yahweh Shai. So these are our teachers. Does not the scripture say, thine eye shall see thy teachers? Yes, it does. So there's no private interpretation. We are following the interpretation, the instruction from the source. Second Peter 1 and 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So we are listening to the voice of the Most High. So when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I well please, 
Now that message extends to the Lord's elect. He's having respect for his elect. Let's go to Exodus 2. Exodus 2. We'll go down to the bottom, somewhere around verse 25. Exodus chapter 2, verse 23. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried and their crying came up unto God by reason of the bondage. So if we fast forward to today, spiritual Sodom in Egypt Pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8, the men of the Lord are sighing and crying. So now the elect is sighing and crying aloud. But this passage is pertaining to ancient Egypt under the bondage of Pharaoh. But it can apply today based on Bible prophecy. <clears throat> Verse 24. See? And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. So when we fast forward to today, the Lord has respect for his elect, his saints. And this is what we are witnessing real time. Let's go here to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. So that unction is the oil of understanding that keeps our lamps burning bright, which is a dark saying for wisdom. Let's keep going. 1 John 2 and 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Say what? No lie is of the truth. So the eyewitness accounts are testifying in the last days. So we are testifying based on what we witnessed in the former lives. Oh, somebody just put a tin can on their head wrapped in aluminum foil. Oh, so we have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. I think that's a revelation. I don't need to search it. I think it's a revelation uh, 19. Uh, let's see here. Revelation 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So we have a sure word of Bible prophecy. Why? Because we were there. You can't testify if you were not a witness. So I'm going to copy and paste this video here in the description box. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Hashem or Kadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much love, honor, respect to the beloved of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Pushing this gospel in truth and sincerity. Helping to edify the body and feed the flock. Feed the lambs of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem or Kadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Call me a Shirala and a Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.